All right, so we are continuing in with the restaking theme. I think that was an amazing panel where we really got to understand the trade-offs for both AVSs uh, and coprocessors and how they engage with like ZK Compute. Um, but now we have um, an amazing partner, uh, YQ from Altlayer, who has been uh, you know, collaborating with us on on-demand ZK proofs. But uh, he will be going through um, kind of Altlayer's infrastructure and how they're looking at leveraging Eigenlayer's restaking mechanism to enable both native and restaked rollups to scale efficiently on their platform. So I'd love to welcome YQ. Please give him a round of applause. Yeah, thanks for the intro. So yeah, as, as mentioned, right, um, it's, it's a sort of amazing panel. And after that panel, um, today I will just uh, elaborate more on this restate rollup. Actually, it's not just um, together with Eigen. And also, some of the very crucial components is basically based on the uh, amazing integration with our partner, Risa Zero. So later, I will just uh, elaborate a little bit more. Um, so. Yeah, sort of like uh, before we go into restate rollup, right? We really want to know what's the current status for the entire blockchain or rollup space. So as we can see, right, for the past uh, two to three years, um, most of the rollup stacks are quite mature. And uh, for example, for applications, either on DeFi, social, gaming, if they want to launch a rollup, they can directly reach out to the providers like us. So quickly, we can launch these rollups like just within a few minutes, within a bunch of clicks. So in that case, right, if we look at the current, current like sort of progress and the status for the rollup space, right, it's becoming like sort of really like a commodity to launch a rollup, and sometimes it's even faster to deploying like smart contracts on the Ethereum or some other L1s and L2s. So in that case, right, as as like sort of the data we have. Uh, basically, we sort of like predict like probably by the end of this year, right? We can really have thousand rollups. It's just like very straightforward to launch rollups. It's even like simpler than, than like sort of launching smart contracts. And however, for all the existing rollups, no matter it's um, OP stack, Arbitrum, Orbit, uh, Polygon CDK, and ZK Sync ZK stack, we still have the so, sort of the single sequencer. Uh, no matter like whether it's a fraud proof or the zk proof, but sequencing and execution part, we, it's still a single node to do the like, sort of sequencing and uh, executing of the transactions. And uh, on top of that, right, if we look at all the existing rollup, right, uh, even sometimes we say like okay, it's uh, like fraud proof and also zk proof, but for most of the time, since this uh, single sequencer at the same time we really have the trust in most of these uh, rollups we know, for example, OP, Arbitrum, and also Base. But for some new rollups, like for example, some application specific rollups, right? We don't really know who's running the sequencer. Even there's a ZK proof or fraud proof there, but still, for most of these uh, uh, confidence we have on these rollups, it's still on whether the brand and also their name we know or not. And beyond that, as we know, right, there's definitely lack of uh, decentralization and uh, just on sequencing side and also probably also on the prover and uh, this verification side. Um, so to s address or solve these uh, sort of issues we have on these uh, existing rollup stacks, uh, earlier we are proposing this uh, risk rollup to really address and solve these uh, problems by introducing a bunch of these AVS we, ha um, we, we, we built to basically provide like sort of a, this, uh, a much better like sort of role of feature site. Um, it's, it's, an, it's agnostic to the existing role. For example, we launch OP stack, or Arbitrum, Orbit, or even CDK. We don't need to change the code. And on top of that, we can provide extra decentralization and also extra security. Um, and also finality with a better this kind of economic security guarantee. Um, as I mentioned, right, we're introducing a bunch of uh, AVS in that case. Um, they will help us to address the like, issues on this uh, uh, sequencing verification and also faster finality. So literally right now we have like sort of these um, three uh, different AVS at the moment for each rollup. Um, and uh, 
we use Vital to address these uh, sequencing problems, and also we leverage Mark on top of Vital to provide the fast finality. And uh, beyond that, we know, right, single sequencer is rightly not that the ideal case, so we have this uh, score to provide the decentralized sequencing. So when we talk about like this uh, decentralized verification, for most people, we always have an impression that, okay, we launch a rollup, there's just a one sequencer. Sequencer will do this kind of ordering of all the transactions, execution, and also posting data to the L1 uh, for DA, and sometimes like um, basically everything just around sequencer, right? But in reality, that's not the case. Like if you look at this OP or Arbitrum, typically they split the functionalities of one sequencer into multiple rows. There's a sequencer, there's a batcher, there's a sort of like also some nodes and components will handle like posting the state rule hash to the L1 or some DA data to the L1. And uh, beyond that, right, if we really want to do this extra verification, if we look at the existing uh, sort of uh, implementation for OP style Arbitrum or also the ZK stuff, we can see that uh, beyond this execution, it would be great like we can also have some extra layer to do this extra verification as a third party layer. So in that case, between we send the transaction to a sequencer and also the time we have the finality. Either we say, okay, the batcher post the transaction to the L1, or we say there's a seven day channel period. It's just like there's a minimum a few minutes or even a few hours or a few days, this kind of uh, finality, like sort of uh, gap. Um, if we can have a third party and also independent layer to do this ver verification, uh, that'd be great because we, it can dramatically shorten this kind of uh, gap between like sort of within the transaction, uh, the time within the transaction and also the time we feel like we have a very good finality. So that's a part, like, as we mentioned, and we built the first AVS called Vital. Um, on top of this existing sequencing, based on the single sequencer, we have a dedicated network of nodes. Uh, under this uh, context of uh, AVS, is a group of operators. They are sort of like secured by these uh, uh, risk ease and probably some other tokens. And uh, on top of that, right, they will do this extra verification for the blocks and the transactions generated by the sequencer. So in that case, you don't really need to blindly believe in the single sequencer. Instead, you can also look at the result from this uh, independent verification network. It gives the users, developers, much better confidence in this rollup, especially for exchanges, DeFi protocols, and also bridges. And uh, as I just mentioned, right, um, for some case, we don't really want a single sequencer. Uh, because it's centralized, sometimes we're concerned that it probably censors some transactions, and uh, in some jurisdictions, basically they treat the single sequencer as a custodian service. So in that case, we need a relatively decentralized network. It won't be like as decentralized as uh, a few thousand nodes similar to Ethereum, but it would be great like we can have uh, like around 20 or sometimes even less than 10 nodes to basically avoid the single point failure. So that's why we introduced this squad. Basically, a bunch of nodes can really precise the transactions as a decentralized network uh, for, um, to replace the single uh, sequencer. And beyond that, um, the most uh, interesting and uh, exciting part is basically the mark. That's also the juicy part we built together with our partners like Eigen and also Risa Zero. Um, as I mentioned, right, first we need a uh, like sort of decentralized verification network, Vital. And on top of that, we can build a lot of interesting like sort of uh, features um, like based on this verification network. One thing is basically Mark. We call it a fast finality gadget. The thing is like we all know, right, if we send a transaction to an L2 sequencer, the thing is like we can get a pre-confirmation uh, like in a few, uh, in milliseconds, for example, OP or Arbitrum is like typically like uh, less than 200 milliseconds. But after that, when we get to the finality, there are multiple like sort of definition for finalities. One thing is like, okay, when the batcher posts uh, like sort of the state rule hash to the L1, and then we get the finality from the like sort of Ethereum. Um, in that case, it takes a few minutes because like for Ethereum, right? Uh, even the block time is 12 seconds, but we need to wait for multiple 
blogs and multiple epochs. So in that case, minimum like 12 minutes or uh, 30 minutes uh, we need to get the finality of Ethereum. Another thing, like as you know, right, for this optimistic roll-up, we sometimes need to wait for this challenge period when you want to do the real withdrawal. So in that case, right, as I just mentioned, it would be great we can have some extra layer to really shorten this period of time for this finality. So for a lot of the applications, right, I, as I just mentioned, either you can just blindly trust um, the sequencer for OPI Arbitrum, probably base, uh, that's good enough because we know that these entities won't do malicious stuff to the users. So in that case, the, um, okay, uh, we can just uh, get the pre-confirmation from the sequencer, it's good enough. However, for a lot of applications I mentioned, right, bridges or exchanges, they want to know this final, final finality or final, final <laughs> confirmation after the transactions sort of like can be cited on the Ethereum. And uh, right now, with this extra like, sort of AVS we provide, um, now you have some middle ground. You don't need to wait for like a uh, few minutes or even few hours, few days to get the final finality. But at the same time, you don't need to blindly uh, trust in this uh, single sequencer. And with this mark, right, it's also a group of operators and uh, basically secured by this Eigen's uh, shared security network. Right now, uh, later I will just show you, it's already in action, it's on midnight. We already got a billion of dollars to secure this network. But in general, as you know, right, it's on top of this vital. So when you have some extra, like, it's kind of a requirement or request on top of the sequencer, like for example, you want to know whether the transaction blocks are really finalized, you can directly check out on Mark. Uh, for example, for some transaction blocks, whether they already or uh, they should be included into the future blocks. So in that case, as you can see, right, between this um, sub-second pre-confirmation and also a few hours or a few minutes, this final confirmation, now you can leverage Mark to achieve this just uh, around 10 seconds or some second level uh, confirmation for the finality. And uh, there are a bunch of benefits, right? As you can see, one is like we can dramatically reduce this kind of uh, finality into from a few minutes into a few seconds. And beyond that, for a lot of these applications, you can build on top of that. You don't really need to set up your full node. You don't really need to wait for super long, or you don't need to blindly trust the uh, trust in this uh, single sequencer. So in that case, like for bridges, DeFi protocols, uh, you can quickly get the finality from this uh, Mark network. And meanwhile, if you really want to do some bridges across different rollups, it's also a good way to mitigate this MEV or arbitrage. Um, beyond that, right, as I just mentioned, it's a part of this uh, Eigen's um, uh, ecosystem leveraging the ABS, right? The cool thing is uh, um, it's not just uh, leveraging this Ethereum security or Ether security. Later, you can also add extra tokens into it. For example, if we provide a mark for a specific rollup, right? Uh, beyond this Ether token, you can also sort of stake that rollup token and also our token. So in that case, it's not just a dual staking or triple staking. In the future, probably you can also like, like USDC uh, stickers to stake USDC to secure your rollup. It's quite sort of diversified and uh, basically to reduce the overall risks on a single token. Um, and uh, the cool thing is, like, uh, as I just mentioned, right, uh, if we go into the details, right, for this mark, uh, this first finality layer, actually we can have multiple modes. One that is uh, very simple, you can just ask all the operators to run a full node. But to be honest, it's very costly to run full node even for, uh, like, sort of a, a roll-up without many transactions. Um, and then once you have the full node, you can really re-execute all the transactions. Um, that's why we call it this uh, pessimistic mode. However, there are also some other ways we call optimistic mo mode, and basically we'll work together with uh, risk zero on it. One way that we can do something similar to optimistic uh, fraud proof. So basically, if everything is fine, okay, it's good. Otherwise, if something wrong, we can do this uh, transaction protocol to identify like which like sort of operator and at which, trans, uh, which transaction or which instruction they have something wrong. And beyond that, uh, as I just mentioned, right, it would be great uh, beyond this normal ABS or shared security, we can have this uh, uh, mathematical proof 
uh, to ensure like even like sometimes this share security or this economic security doesn't work, we can still have this uh, proof to show that okay, that guy or the sequencer or the operator really behaves maliciously. So that's a part like we beyond normal this kind of uh, uh, like full node or this kind of roll up sequencer implementation. We also implement this uh, stateless client for OP stack. And beyond this OP stack, uh, uh, stateless client um, for the OP stack, we also put some of the proof uh, into this uh, RISA zero, and we can generate the proof. And uh, if all the economic security doesn't work, or the other operators behave maliciously, right, we can still have this proof generated by RISA zero, this bonsai, and uh, this proof can be verified on Ethereum to show that, okay, this is basically something wrong happening, and uh, that's sort of the last line of defense we have. And more aggressively, right? So we can also have this kind of, uh, just trigger this uh, stateless uh, client to generate ZK proof for every block. It's a little bit costly, but in the end, as you can see, it uh, sort of like fall back into a ZK EVM rod to basically just leverage reset zero generate ZK proof and post on the Ethereum regularly. So in that case, as you can see, right, uh, you can literally get the best and the most uh, secure kind of uh, finality from uh, the Ethereum and also this uh, Mark protocol. And beyond that, right, uh, the cool thing is like, um, it's not like in testnet or in like sort of PowerPoint, all the things are already live on midnight. Uh, you can just quickly check out like, we already launched uh, Mark and also Restate Rollup for multiple protocols. Um, like for our own Mark protocol, it already supports the OP and also Arbitrum Midnight. Cyber is the first like sort of research rollout for social, exterior for gaming, and Dodo for DeFi. And today we just launched another one, it's for DPing. Um, as you can see, right, for the Mark itself, we already um, secure like over one billion sort of this um, security for uh, in, uh, securing like basically different uh, rollups for this fast finality and also decentralization. And beyond that, it's a lot of like uh, projects and partners we have in the ecosystem. And uh, if any of you would like to try out this risk rollup or would like to basically doing research together on this risk rollup and also integration with this uh, risk zero ZK proof, just feel free to reach out to me. And uh, yeah, that's all the like sort of um, content for the research rollup. As you know, right, it's a really new space to explore. And uh, we're happy to have uh, further conversations and research discussions on this new category of rollups. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>